Hi, this is Anil and welcome to the video tutorial for the learning lad on C++ programming. So in this tutorial, we're going to learn about some built-in predefined macros in C++. So in C++, we have the built-in macros like, like the line, you know, to underscore, line, then to underscore, and then we have file, and then we have uh, date, and then uh, we have time, and then we have another one called, uh, you know, uh, stdc and another one is uh, c plus plus all right so now we're gonna see you know what these predefined macros are gonna do and also how to use them in our program all right so the first thing is about the line macro so this line macro is gonna contain the current line number of the file so here just for the demonstration purpose I'm gonna use a C out and I just gonna say um, current line is and then we're just gonna use our line macro so it's gonna be two underscore and then line in caps and then two underscore and then I just gonna end this line all right now I just gonna save this and I'm gonna build and run this now you guys can see current line is seven so here you know we have defined this in the seventh line and that's why we get that so if I copy this and paste it in uh, let's say 11th line and if I build and run this current line is 7 and current line is 11 so you know this line macro is gonna contain the line number and then we have another macro called file you know I'm just gonna copy and paste it here and you know this file macro is gonna contain the file name of the current source file so here um, I'm just gonna change this one to file and here we need to write underscore underscore file in capitals and then two underscores that's it we're just gonna build and run this and you guys can see current file is you know with the full path you know f c++ programming predefined macro names and main.cpp and the next predefined macro that we're gonna see is the date you know this date macro contains the string form of the month day and year you know that is the date of translation of source code into object code so I just gonna paste this one and I just gonna change this one to um, date of translation of source code to object code is and uh, here we're just gonna refer date all right I'm just gonna build and run this now we get um, date of translation of source code to object core A is January 23 2014 and then next one we have is the time macro so this time macro contains the time at which the program was compiled and the time is represented in a string having the form hour minute and second so I'm gonna paste it here and I'm just gonna change this one to compile time and here I'm just gonna refer time so it should be underscore underscore time and uh, in caps and then underscore underscore I'm just gonna save this I'm gonna build and run this you know the compile time is 8 47 and 46 and then we have the macro such as the STDC you know which is used to check whether our compiler will accept only the standard C or C++ code so so it's gonna return either true or false or you know 0 or 1 so I'm just gonna say um, standard C++ code and here um, I'm just gonna use that stdc so it's gonna be underscore underscore and then stdc standard c or c++ i'm just gonna build and run this and it returns one you know which you know which means that our compiler will accept only the standard c or c++ code that does not contain any non-standard extensions all right the next one that i want you guys to teach you is about the c++ you know, which is used to check whether our compiler is conforming to a standard c++ or not if our compiler is conforming to the standard C++, then you know it's gonna contain a uh, a value of six digits. Else, it's gonna contain a value 
with five or less digits so i just gonna paste it here and i just gonna change this one to standard c plus plus conforming and here i just gonna use c plus plus so here the usage of the c plus plus macro is different so it should be underscore underscore then c plus plus in small letters that's it then i just gonna save this i just gonna build and run this and you know we get one two three four five six six digits and that's why you can say that you know our compiler is conforming to the standard c plus plus all right the next thing that i want you guys to teach you is about the line directive so this line directive is to, is used to change the value of this line and file so you know this line identifier or this macro is going to contain the line number of the currently compiled line of code and this file macro or the identifier is going to contain the name of the source file being compiled so here we're going to use the preprocessor directive line to change this the value of this line to use this first we need to write hash and then line in small letters and then we need to write a line number let's say thousand now if i copy this line and file macro here you know after this one you know because of this line preprocessor directive here you know you know this line will be considered as the thousand line and uh, you know we can change the file name also that i'm going to teach you next so i just going to save this and i'm going to build and run this now you guys can see current line is 1000 you know because of this line macro you know the value of this line is changed here the number that we pass must be a positive integer and it becomes the new value of this line macro all right the next thing is we can pass a file name here for example let's say anil.txt or you know any file name so now you know once we pass this line number and file name you know this line macro is going to contain this line number or this line will become the line number we specify here and you know this file macro is going to contain the file name that we specify here so i just going to build and run this and now you guys can see current file is anil.txt so you know this line preprocessor directive is used to change the values of this line and files all right guys this is about some predefined macronyms and the preprocessor directive line Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next tutorial.